But let's look at another example where maybe we have some other combination of even and odd powers of secants and tangents. So what have we handled so far? Right? So we're looking specifically at um, powers, products of these powers of secants and tangents. Okay, and if you think about all the different combinations of even and odd we could have, we could have tangent be odd, secant be even, tangent be even, secant be um, odd, we could have them both be odd, or we could have them both be even. Okay, so in the case where they're both odd, okay, well then at least you have the tangent power being odd, and we would pull off a secant x tan x, as we saw done in our previous example. If at least you have um, secant being even here, we'll definitely want to pull off the secant squared. Okay, And up here where you have both tangent odd and secant even, we have a choice of which method we want to do. Okay, So the only combination here that's um, we don't know what to do with yet that we need to talk about is what if you have an even power of tangent and an odd power of secant? What are we going to do in that case? And that's what we have here in example 5. I've got an even power of tangent and an odd power of secant. Okay, so what's the guideline here? The trick that we want to use in this case is we want to write the tangent um, information that we have in terms of secants. Okay, so turn this into something that's just in terms of secants. Because it's not going to work to do these, these other two methods. I can't pull off a secant squared because, well, I just have a secant here. Um, I also can't pull off a secant tan, at least not helpfully, because that would leave me with just a single tangent, and I'd want to be able to replace something, my tangent in terms of secants for this thing to work. So it doesn't work if I have just a single tangent. I can't write a single tangent in terms of secants. So we see that these methods from before aren't going to work. So instead we're going to write our tangents in terms of secant using the Pythagorean identity. Okay, what does that give us here? So our tangent squared, remember we know that one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. Okay, so we're writing this in terms of secants, and then we're going to distribute this through and see that I've got an integral of secant cubed x minus secant x. Okay, so notice that this situation with an even power of tangent and an odd power of secant actually breaks down into, after we rewrite our tangents in terms of, of secants, into a situation where I've got just powers of secant. So that's um, allowing us to handle another technique, what to do when we have just a power of secant by itself. Okay, For just the single secant, we have an antiderivative rule for that. So the question is, how am I going to handle secant cubed? Okay. Well, the integral of an odd power of um, secant, or just a, a power of secant by itself, I should say, oops, I wrote sine, is going to involve using integration by parts. So if we've got just secant to the mx by itself, we're going to pull off a secant squared x. Okay, and we're going to use integration by parts. Okay, so let's see how that's going to work in um, this example here. Okay, so I've got my secant cubed. I'm going to rewrite that as secant x times secant squared x dx. And then I have my integral of secant, which remember from our rules is the log of secant x plus tan x, okay? Now by breaking up secant cubed here into secant x and secant squared x and saying I'm going to use integration by parts, 
I want to be able to pick for my dv here this secant squared. So when I do integration by parts and pull off that secant squared, I want to make that my dv because we know how to easily integrate secant squared. When we integrate secant squared, we get tangent. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use integration by parts on this. So let's see what that gives us. So we have u equals, um, let's see, secant x, and our dv is secant squared x dx. So v is tan x, and du is secant x tan x dx. Okay, so remember what our integration by parts is. And again, notice that we are using another integration technique um, from the previous section within um, this section of trig integrals. We made, we've made use of u substitution. Now we're also going to make use of integration by parts. So remember, we know that the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. So what are we going to have here? Well, our secant x um, secant squared x dx part here is going to become secant x tan x minus our integral of tan x times secant x tan x. So notice that that's going to end up being tan squared secant x dx. And then we have minus our log of secant x plus tan x. Okay, so what is this integral of tan squared secant x remind us of? Well, that's the exactly the integral that we had to start with. So let me rewrite our initial integral over here. We had tangent squared x secant x dx. Okay, so if you remember one of those later problems we did with integration by parts, we had situation where, where situations excuse me, where we would do integration by parts, and we'd end up with the same integral as before. And how we handled that was we would then treat this like um, an algebra equation where I had an unknown that I wanted to solve for. So what I have is one copy of the integral on the left and negative one copies of it on the right. So I can add it to both sides and get two copies of the integral of tan squared x secant, whoops, secant x dx equals my secant x tan x minus log of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. And now to solve for my um, integral that I'm interested in, I can divide both sides by two. So we see we're gonna get the integral of tan squared x secant x dx equals one half secant x tan x minus the log of secant x plus tan x plus c. Okay. So we want to keep in mind that when we're in this situation, remember what led us to this, the situation where I have an even power of tangent and an odd power of secant, I'm going to write my tans in terms of secants, which is going to lead me to have just a sum of powers of secants, which means I then use the rule for handling powers of secants, which means pulling off a secant squared to use as dv in integration by parts. And if you had a higher power of secant, um, you'd end up um, doing integration by parts more than once. Okay, you'd end up uh, repeating some, some parts of this procedure. So we won't usually give you very high powered things. We don't want to make you do this again and again. But you should understand this, this procedure for um, examples like this.